You know how we do it, we have funky music in our ear. We get to right to ain't no fighting, we just sitting there trying to win. Hello sports fans, I'm your host Nicholas Austin Holiday here with my special in-studio co-host today, Buddy Scott. What's going on folks? And this is another episode of Between Class of Sports here live on the, AG, on the AMG AGM. Gotcha. AGM. <laughs> on the AGM Radio <laughs> Network, live every Monday night at 8 p.m. So, week 11, college football is now in the books. Everything is starting to shape up, how the playoffs are going to play out, what teams are contenders, what teams are a little bit fraudulent. Pretenders. Exactly. So, everything's starting to play out a little bit. But you know what? Before I kind of jump into some of that action, we're going to hit a couple of the local teams. You know, the Florida teams that showed them some love. So, USF, you got to start off with USF. Everybody knows that USF beat number 22 ranked Temple. Say what? USF beat <laughs> number 22 ranked Temple. Why? I, I guess Willie Taggart's trying to do something right now. I, I guess Taggart said, you know what? I'm tired of being a laughing stock. I'm tired of losing. And he sent those guys out there to play some football. Well, it's hard to lose when you got Mr. Mack back there toting 230 yards. I'm going to tell you right now, I've been a big fan of Marlon Mack this entire season. I really just started following him this season. I was like, wow, this kid really has some skills. 21 carries, 230 yards, two touchdowns, and 11 yards per carry average. Now, you know what that tells me about Temple? They can't stop the run. That, that told me that Temple didn't play any defense on Saturday. <laughs> or, or maybe they tried to play defense, but they couldn't do anything with them. That's, that's impressive. I would probably say, what, the secondary got most of the tackles? They had to. Their safety is probably the leading tackler. And he probably didn't make many tackles either because he still had 230 yards. <laughs> but, hey, Quentin Flowers. You know, Quentin Flowers, he's, he's not much of a passer, but he came through with 230 passing yards and two touchdowns. He tried. You know, now that's, that's big for him. So, you know what, maybe... Well, that does make them bowl eligible. Let's, let's go ahead and point that out. So now USF is bowl eligible. Wow. Now, I don't know who they're going to play. I don't know what type of bowl they're going to go to. It's not going to be anything special, but that's big. Just to be bowl eligible. That's money to the school. Exactly. That's a good amount of money. Uh, that uh, kind of get your, get your viewership up, bring the fans in for you and everything. So that's really big for USF. Uh, that's really big for Taggart. The program needed it. Taggart needed it. That's going to get him some credibil credibility. Credibility. That's going to help him out a lot because I know people were trying to get rid of him or they were calling for his head. But you know what? He might be here to stay after that big win. But you know what? I'm going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with some more football action for you. Welcome back, sports fans. And once again, this is Between Class of Sports here on the AGM Radio Network, live every Monday night at 8 p.m. So let's get back into some more of this action. FAU loses to Middle Tennessee State 24-17. FIU loses to Marshall, 52-0. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 52-0? Yes. FIU lost to Marshall, 52-0. Looks like a basketball score. And it would be a basketball score if FIU scored, but unfortunately <laughs> it's not. So we, this is a beat down. Yeah, we're not going to stay on that one too long. That's, that's embarrassing, but, you know, it's part of the game. Well, not for everybody, but it's part of the game sometimes. FAMU loses to Morgan State, 21-7. And you know what that leads me into? The Florida Classic coming up this weekend in Orlando, Florida. Florida A&M versus Bethune-Cookman. I need everybody to just take a quick moment and pray for FAMU. It's nothing wrong with them. The football team is just 1-9. Wow. Well, you know you got to throw the records out, unfortunately. Because normally with this game, just a robbery game. I mean, so... Last year, FAMU was not supposed to be in the game, but it went down to overtime, and BCC had to pull out the two-point conversion to win the game. I'm, I'm scared for FAMU this year. Um, I just don't know 
if they have what it takes to stay in the game for an entire game this year. Now, they could surprise me, and I would actually look forward to that if they did that, but right now it's just not looking good. They they just keep taking L's this year. I know Coach Alex Woods, he's trying to build a, thing. He's trying to build a team up. Uh, it's going to take him a couple of years probably to get his players in there, get his system in, but we'll see how things work out with them. But in the meantime, we're, we're all just going to say a silent prayer for FAMU going into this weekend, and hopefully they can – they can pull through my alma mater. Hopefully they can pull through. And I love if they can win the game, but I would love it even more if they could just keep the game close. Wish they're not gonna do. We'll see. I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna say it yet, but it's not looking good, but you never know. That's like five five in a, in a row, right? Okay, so on the floor of the <laughs> All right, uh, Florida Tech was in a good position this weekend. They was trying to get that win against Valdosta State. If they got that win, they would have uh, been tied for the conference and got a chance to share in the conference championship. Uh, Valdosta State had other plans and made sure that that did not happen. <laughs> uh, on to the USF men's soccer uh, team. They were lost 2-1 to one to UConn. It was two quick scores within a five-minute period in the second quarter. Um, that kind of put USF away. They, they tried to make a little comeback, but it didn't work. Um, UConn had to face Tulsa. T Tulsa was coming in as a defending champion, and um, they actually won the game on the 4-3 to three penalty kicks. I don't know much about soccer, so I don't know if that was at the end of the game. I, we'll have to find out about that. But Tulsa wins the conference crown again. Um, USF soccer team dropped a 2-1 to one decision with Florida Gulf Coast Eagles. That was last Saturday. Um, we also had the number three ranked team, U University of Tampa women's soccer team. They defeated the number six team, Lee, and the number two, North Alabama, both by score one. And now they'll be facing number one ranked Barry on November 20th. So if you guys want to check that out, go to the UT website. Um, also, we got Florida, uh, some of the Hillsborough Community College volleyball team. It's now at 31 and 5, 7 and 1 in conference play. They'll be in Casper, Wyoming for the uh, NJCAA National Championship. Those games will start on November 19th. So we want to give a go Lady Hawks to those uh, young ladies. And we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to go ahead and talk about the top 10 uh, sports that's going on. I mean, top 10 um, in your college uh, sports, football. Welcome back, sports fans. Time to delve into some of this delicious college football action. Delicious? Oh, delicious. Wow. Most definitely. You want to get a little bit of it. It's kind of like the, what is it, the the Patty LaBelle pie? Oh, man. You want to get a little bit before it's going <laughs> off the shelf. Oh. <laughs> so you, you have to enjoy it while it's, while, it's, while it's right. I ain't had none of the pies. Is it good? I never had any either. Oh, okay. I'm probably not. I heard some Muslims say that. We've been selling pies for years. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how hot bean pies are in the streets, but you know, sweet potato pie is probably a little bit more popular. <laughs> but you know, I mean, hey, if you want a if you want a bean pie, get it. If you want a, a Patty Labelle sweet potato pie off the shelf at Walmart, go get that too. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> let's get to, let's get to some of this football action. So Syr Syracuse versus the number one Clemson Tigers. Clemson wins by ten points. Uh, a game that a lot of people thought that Clemson was going to just go ahead and wrap it up with, but Syracuse is a, a scrappy team. Uh, Syracuse ran the ball. They, were, they they rushed the ball a lot on Clemson. I was surprised about it. You know, overall they had 242 rushing yards and three touchdowns. You think they overlooking them? They just getting ready for the ACC championship? Or yeah, I'm not gonna. I, I don't. I definitely don't think that Syracuse is legit. So I think that Clemson probably just. Had an off game. Every team has an off game. You know, the most important thing is that you win even when you have an off game. Yeah. And, you know, Clemson won. They're still number one. That's not going to change. They're probably going to win. Well, I'm not going to say they're going to win. They're going to go to the ACC championship, you know, on the back of Deshaun Watson, who threw for 360 yards. Wow. Two touchdowns. So, uh, Sharon Peek had 120 receiving yards and one touchdown with a longer 64. So they had some explosive plays. Yeah. I, you know, when I was watching the game, I was like, geez, Syracuse is still in this game? When is Clemson going to blow it open? And it never happened. 
You well, know? you just like you say at this point, you just want to get that win and stay in the hunt. Most definitely and work on some mechanics. Exactly. But while we're talking about Clemson and while we're talking about the ATC championship game, we might as well go into the team that's going to come out of the coastal division of the ACC, and that's North Carolina. Wow. So North Carolina. Talk about the basketball team. No, North Carolina has a football team. I heard that. Exactly. And they are 9-1 and one and 6-0 and oh in conference, and they beat the University of Miami 59-21. to 21. I don't know. Well, you can't fire your coach. You already fired him, right? Can you fire the interim head coach? I don't know, man. When you lose it like this, I don't think you can fire nobody. I think you just got to keep everybody in place. I went outside after the game was over. I dug up a little plot of the ground. I, I put some little flowers around it. <laughs> I drew a, a U on a piece of paper. Yeah. I folded it up, put it in the ground. So you buried. And I just, I said, rest in peace to the University of Miami's defense. Because you let, a, you let a team put up 59 points on you. Mind you, it's not like they were put. it's not like they did that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong, they put up, now, they put up, what, 66 points on Duke, I believe it is? Yeah. But you're Miami, you're not Duke. Mark Play like it. Exactly. You know, that, that's that's crazy. For, you know, that amount of rushing yards, Mark, Marquise Williams, a North Carolina quarterback, had 101 rushing yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Now, for this guy that's airing it out every single week, pretty much, he only threw for 105 yards and one touchdown. So for you to still lose like that, means that you gave up a boatload yeah, of rushing ground. yards. You know, Elijah Hood, he had 132 yards on the ground and a touchdown. So they gave up they gave up more than 100 yards rushing to two different rushers, and one oh, of them no. was the quarterback. Yeah, that's pretty bad. You know what? I'm not sure what they have in store. Clearly, this season is clearly this season is a wash. They, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw Miami lose all the rest of the game from here on out. <laughs> you know, and that's not that's not a knock against them. What, they gonna pull a UCF? Possibly. Look, they, look, they play Georgia Tech, and they had Pitt left. So those are two very losable games. Obviously, losable Miami, games. Miami has a hard time stopping a run, which is what Georgia Tech specializes in. Yeah. And Pittsburgh. I mean, they're a pretty solid team themselves. So they have, you know, Tyler Boyd at wide receiver, who I'm a big fan of. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Miami lose the rest of their games and go into a bowl game and, you know, possibly lose that game too. Wow. You know, how the, how the mighty have fallen? Well, they always say it's next year. So I know they're looking at what's going to happen next year. So I, 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 I'm with them next year. Yeah, I, I watched some of the I watched some of the game. I didn't watch the whole thing because, like I said, it was a a circus score, so I didn't watch I didn't watch all of the game. But those guys, they the effort it wasn't there. Those guys they gave up clear clearly. Now they gave up when Golden was there. Now they're giving up when the you know the interim head coach is there. You know, hopefully they won't give up when they get a new coach next season. We'll see. Most definitely, we will definitely see. Uh, on to a little bit, little bit more ACC football action. Virginia Tech beats Georgia Tech 23-21. Georgia Tech had a real shot to win that game, but Georgia Tech doesn't like to hold on to the ball. And Virginia Tech was all over it. What do you mean? Fumbles? Fumbles. Fumbles. Wow. Fumbles. Plural. <laughs> Same people or different players? Uh, different players, but still, you got to hold on to the ball. There's nothing else you can say about it. But I'm not going to stay on that one too long. Florida State beats NC State 34-17. Mm -hmm. The only thing that bothers me about that game is that people are going to see, oh, 34-17, NC State played a tough game. No. Florida State had five turnovers. Yeah. Five turnovers. NC State had one. NC State scored 17 points Off in the, the first quarter. Oh, okay. 17 points in the first quarter. Yeah. Which means they didn't score a single time the rest of the game. Florida State was out there struggling. Everett Golson, he threw, what, two interceptions and he had a fumble. He looked like the Everett Golson of old in Notre Dame, just turnover machine. So Jimbo Jimbo went into his bag of tricks and said, Everett Golson, take a seat on the bench, mm -hmm. get comfortable. Sean McGuire came in. The team looked completely different. They, they just, from that point on, when Sean McGuire came in, there was nothing more to it. They... They, they ran the ball down NC State's throat. They threw the ball all they over. They looked like a team again. Yeah, they looked like a team. 
Uh, kudos to Dalvin Cook, who finished the game with 138 yards rushing oh, yeah. and two touchdowns. Dalvin Cook actually broke Ward Dunn's single season rushing record at Florida State from the 95 96 season. Uh, Ward Dunn had 1,242 yards. Okay. Dalvin Cook has broken that, but Dalvin Cook has also gone over 1,300 yards on the season. Yeah. The so he's got at least, what, two more games, though, right? Oh. And maybe a bowl game? That's what? Not, not maybe. Yeah, that's, they're, they're bowl eligible, so... Yeah, that's, that's, that's what, what, another 400 yards? Yeah. I mean, next week against Chattanooga, you're not going to play him too long, but he could put up some big yards, and you have him playing against Florida, rivalry game. You yeah, know that yeah, 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 yeah. And then they, they still have a bowl game, so he's not only going to... He not only broke the record, but he's going to probably shatter it yeah. by the time the season's over. Add yeah, him another 400. That, that, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, but definitely, definitely a really good game, you know, uh, from that... Second quarter on, more, <laughs> I'll say that. Our Florida State defense basically swallowed up Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. And the NC State offense, they, they killed him. They hit him every play. It hurt me when I watched him get hit that much. <laughs> oh, they hit him every play. Every play? He couldn't break a single tackle. Oh, man. I, you know, Demarcus Walker coming off the end, two sacks and everything. Huge game for Florida State. We're going to take a quick break, sports fans. We'll be right back right with some more action for you. Welcome back, sports fans. Before I get into some more of this action, everybody make sure to contact me. Get your questions out there. You can hit me up on Twitter at N Austin Holiday. That's Holiday with two L's. You can hit me up on Facebook. That's Nicholas Austin hyphen Holiday. That's Holiday with two L's once again. Toby, you want to give out some of your information? Not at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can hit us up. At the uh, Between Classes um, website, which is betweenclasses.org. Got our emails on there. Um, you can send a, send an email to us. We get those questions on the air, and uh, we'll go from now. Speaking of on the air, uh, probably probably in the next couple of weeks, two to three weeks, we're going to have this call-in line working. The line's going to be hot, so I want you to call in with your questions. I will not hesitate to hang up on you if you ask me a stupid question. So just keep that in mind. But anybody with a legitimate question, please call in. I'll answer all questions, have a little debate with you, and you can go on your merry way. And if I feel myself losing the debate, I will not hesitate to hang up on you. Wow. That's you don't play fair, huh? Nope. But I don't have to play fair because I'm it's here. It's your show. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So let's get back into some of this football action. You have Alabama versus Mississippi State. Alabama, the, the number two team. The number two ranked team in the nation beats Mississippi State 31-6. to I'm not surprised about that. I haven't been impressed with Mississippi State at all. Yeah. I wasn't impressed with them last season. People just keep, I don't understand why people keep hyping them up to be something that they're not. Well, they had a nice run, but they're falling back where they were at. I mean, and that's what it is. You, you, you know, you're going you're, you're gonna to have at least one good year where you can be proud of, but... I mean, it's seven and three, three and three in the conference. I mean, that's where they've been. I mean, it's not nothing new. Everybody jumped on that Dak Prescott train. I mean, he's has he put up some nice yards, but he's been there for a while, so he's supposed to put up some good yards. He throws for three hundred yards, one interception. You know, a QBR of sixteen point seven. That's the yards look good, but what else looks good with that? Bro, twenty-two for forty-three. That I mean, what? Did he even throw? Uh, uh, the pass is not getting there. Or somebody dropping the ball. Which one was it? Pass is not getting there. People getting hit. You know, Alabama has a Alabama has a special way of kind of breaking their opponents. You can just see it as the game goes on. <laughs> they have a way of just kind of just breaking their opponents, breaking their spirit, yeah. breaking their drive. And I think that happens when you get when you get hit a lot and you get hit hard. You don't want to keep playing. You mean like that Ronda Rousey thing? <laughs> Ronda Rousey. Knocked out in the second round. Oh, man. I'm sure Floyd Mayweather's happy about that one. Man, let's get back to the sports. Okay. I'm sorry, I just threw that out there. Okay. Derrick Henry, over 200 yards rushing, two touchdowns, 204 yards to be exact. That's a regular day. Well, that's about 10 yards to carry, too, right? What's that? Uh, 9.3. 9.3. That's about right. The Calvin Ridley, 76 yards, one touchdown. They didn't have to do too much through the air. It's not like they would because it's not like Jacob Coker's a world beater. Yeah. But when you have Derrick Henry running the ball. Just and, give it to him. And you have a defense like that, 
you don't have to really worry about the pass that much. So what was the game plan? Get Derrick Henry the ball? That's it. And it's not even anything to go through any of the stats with Mississippi State because outside of Fred Ross having 114 receiving yards, they didn't do anything. They only they, had they, six points. They did what they could. They, they had six points. They didn't score a touchdown. Yeah. They had two field goals. Well, Alabama not going to make it easy for you to score a touchdown. So. Alabama continues breaking opponent spirits. Alabama keeps chopping through the SEC. Arkansas beats LSU 31-14. Oh, no. Didn't see that one coming. Well, when you're down, you know. Yeah. You know what? There was, you know, there, there wasn't necessarily a game plan. It's not like it's not like LSU had some intricate game plan. Brandon Harris is not a good quarterback, and all they have is Leonard Fournette. So you stack the box, you take you take away the run, you dare them to pass, and Brandon Harris doesn't make you pay for it. How many yards your boy uh, Fournette got? Fournette had 91 yards rushing and one touchdown. You know, that's that's solid. Not for Fournette, it's not. Not not for somebody who was averaging, what, 193 yards a game at one point in the season? Okay, Les Miles, you're going to keep running your running backs into the ground like that? People going to keep stacking the box? You better recruit a quarterback. You better bring a quarterback in to help you out. Because people are going to keep doing that. The game plan is not difficult. It's laid out right in front of you. Stop the run. Dare them to pass, they can't beat you with it. Alabama did it, Arkansas did it, and then Arkansas flipped it around and ran the ball down their throats. Arkansas had 300 yards rushing as a team. Wow. I, I thought, when I looked out there, I said, oh, Leonard Fournette has dreads? Oh, <laughs> never mind, that's Alex Collins. <laughs> running for 141 yards and two touchdowns. You ain't right. Oh, Alex Collins <laughs> ran all over them. Yeah. <laughs> Even Cody Walker came in as a backup and had 88 yards on the ground. And Jerry Cornelius added another 71 yards on the ground. So, but it's supposed to be the other way around or something, right? Well, you would think it would be, but unfortunately, like I said, the, the LSU pulled a wool over our, our eyes, and the wool is gone now. Everybody can see they are not a legitimate contender. They were beating up on some bad teams earlier in the season, some bad defenses. Don't get me wrong. He probably, I wouldn't say that. Now, come on. I'm just I'm I'm just calling it like it is. I feel like they were running the ball down the throats of some bad teams. So yeah, you know teams like what Auburn, Syracuse, South Carolina, Western Kentucky. You, you see a train yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You see a train here. So when you finally got a, a opponent, you, you're not gonna do exactly. I mean, he put up some good yards against Florida. They have a good defense, but that's really. That's really the only legit, legitimate opponent that he ran the ball against before they ran into Alabama and Alabama broke their spirit. Yeah, they did break their spirit. But we might get a chance to see them because they might be one of these Outback Bowls or, or, the, or the Capital One Bowl. Well, if they're here locally, I'm there. I want to see, see this non-passing attack <laughs> run 100 times in person and see what happens. But... You know, whoever they play against in a bowl game probably won't have the defense to stop them. Fournette will probably, probably run wild on them. So, Florida beat South Carolina 24-14. to uh, Game didn't, it wasn't all that impressive, but you know what? Florida got the win. Florida already locked up the East. Treon Harris continues to underwhelm at quarterback. We'll see what happens next year when Will Greer gets back and they bring in their new recruits. Yeah, that's going to be a rough, rough AC, uh, SEC championship. Alabama getting in, they have to play against Florida. Yeah, Alabama's probably going to beat up on Florida uh, fairly easily, stop the run. Treon Harris can't beat you with the pass, so what are you going to do? Pretty much nothing. <laughs> you know, I'll leave it at that. You, you can't really do anything. If you can't, if you can't pass and uh, the opposing team stops the run, then you're at the mercy of what Nick Saban wants to do with you. And Nick Saban has no problem putting his foot on your neck when he has you down. Mm -hmm. Georgia beats Auburn 20-13. I don't want to hear about that. That's two bad teams. I don't want to hear about they that. They played a bad game. You could skip that. And the game didn't look good. And Auburn and Georgia continue to be bad. But maybe Coach Mark Rick saved his job. But like I said, that's two bad teams. Tennessee beat North Texas 24-0. Vanderbilt beat Kentucky. 
Kentucky continues to be the laughing stock of the SEC and one of the laughing stocks in college football, period. They are 2-6 and six in the SEC. A lot of people thought that Mark Stoops was going to come in and turn things around. I did. It's <laughs> There's a lot of people that thought that, but apparently that's not going to happen. I did. Well, you thought right because there was nothing. It's hard to turn some of these programs around. I mean, it takes some time sometimes to, to, to get these programs where they need to be at. It's just a hard uphill battle. I agree with you. I agree with you, but we're going to kind of jump off the SEC and jump into a little bit of Big 12 action, a big game. The, the game day was there, the big game of the weekend, Oklahoma versus Baylor. That game didn't disappoint. That was a really, really good game. Oklahoma wins 44-34 to in a smash mouth on one side of the field type of game. Oklahoma, they, they pretty much dominated the lines of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, and that's where Baylor fell to them. Baylor can't run the ball. If Baylor can't run the ball, then you don't have to respect the pass as much, which is where they eat. They eat because they can throw the ball downfield yeah, on you. Yeah. But if you can stop that run, then you can focus more on that pass, and it doesn't look all as impressive anymore. You know, Jared Stidham, he threw for 257 yards. He had two touchdowns, but he also had two interceptions. Shock Linwood, he had 103 on the ground, but that's not that's not over the top with Baylor. Shock Linwood usually puts up a lot more yards than that on the ground, so... Baker Mayfield comes out, three touchdowns, one interception, 270 yards. Samaji Piran, mm -hmm. looking like an NFL running back out there, runs for 166 yards and two touchdowns. And I don't know who was tasked with covering Sterling Shepard, but Sterling Shepard gave everybody, <laughs> he gave everybody the business. 177 yards and two touchdowns, and nobody covering him. They just run it down the field with him. He gave everybody the business that tried to cover him. I said, <laughs> at one point I was just looking, and he called a pass on the sideline. I said, okay, is anybody covering him? <laughs> no. Because you may want to cover the team leading receiver. I mean, that, that's just my thoughts on it. Maybe you didn't have no answer. If you, if you just don't have no answer, what you going to do? Watch it happen? You, you, you're better off just getting a pass interference every play instead of letting him just bomb you downfield all game. But you know what? I'm not the defensive coordinator, so that's not my job. That's you, not my call. You're a sports athlete. Yeah, that, that's not my call. So, you know what? The defensive coordinator, maybe that's all he could work with. Maybe, you know, maybe Sterling was just, he was just the creeper. He was just Sterling. He was <laughs> but you know what? I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone. Oklahoma State beats Iowa State 35-31, to 31, a game that went down to the end. I didn't think that game was going to be that good, but you know what? Hey, Iowa State. They hung tough. They fell at the end. Joel Lanning only had 162 yards passing, one touchdown, one interception. But you know what? He rushed for 130 yards on the ground and had two touchdowns. But in the end, mm -hmm. they just they couldn't keep that momentum going. Mason Rudolph, he started coming alive. He had 327 yards, one touchdown. Not crazy stats, but, hey, they got the win. I think that, I think that Oklahoma State is going to be – somewhere in that top six when the college football playoff releases their rankings tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So we'll see how that plays out. But, you know what, things are just kind of all over the place. Who's, who's going to win? Is it going to be Oklahoma State? State? Is it going to be Oklahoma? TCU is out of it now. Baylor, after that loss, they're out of it. So who really wants it that bad? I don't know. Now, they have a, do they have a conference championship or no? Does the Big 12 have a conference championship? Yeah. They don't. And that's what so it's going to come down to, ooh. Exactly. That's, wow. what, that's what's going to hurt them in the end is possibly not having a conference championship. And, you know, is Oklahoma State going to be undefeated? How's that going to work out? Oklahoma already has a loss, so we'll see how that plays out. Well, how does their, how do, who, how does their uh, conference set up at the end? It goes by the highest rank? Yeah, they just have a round-robin type of schedule where everybody plays everybody. So, you know, you can just kind of... Uh, eliminate due to losing along the way, and so the Oklahoma Oklahoma State game is gonna be the game. That's what it looks like. Want to take off? You know what? But they better. You want to send somebody into that playoff, so you better hope the the right team wins and certain teams win out all the way, because you don't want to be not represented in that that college football playoff right now. Yeah, and it's looking really competitive, so. 
I'm not really sure who's going to come out of it. Uh, Texas takes a loss to West Virginia, 20 to 38. Texas continues to struggle. We'll see if Charlie Strong can get them on track. TCU ekes out a win against defeated Kansas, and by defeated I mean Kansas hasn't won a single game. Whoa! They are 0 and 10 and 0 and 7 in conference. <laughs> so they just showing up to the game. So if we're gonna call them undefeated. We just have to say defeated for the. Team. So they ready for the basketball to start. I can't remember the last time Kansas had a good football team. Start the basketball. Just start it early. Like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it now. When was the last time Kansas had a good football team? Uh, they had a quarterback. This was, this was some years ago. A little short guy that was pretty good. I can't remember his name, but that's the last time I can remember Kansas being somewhat competitive. <laughs> Man, they, I'm sad. I, I don't know what it is. They. I don't know if it's coaching, if it's player development, if it's recruiting, if it's a maybe they're just not maybe they're not paying the program enough money, maybe they're not just putting enough into it, but that's that's bad. To not have won a single game all year. You know. You see Fam, you won a game. Fam, you've been fam, you looks bad. Kansas hadn't won a single game. Don't look like they're gonna win a game. You know what? Honestly it doesn't really Matter to me much if they win a game or not because it's not like they were going to be contenders. <laughs> so, you know, even if they won a couple of games, I guess it wouldn't really matter that much. So let's go ahead and jump off of there. Let's jump into the Big Ten a little bit. Ohio State beats Illinois 28 to 3. Not much of not much of an impressive game in my opinion. Uh, I mean Ohio State got the win. JT Barrett, he underwhelmed 150 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Etikio Elliott did not underwhelm as he ran for 181 yards mm -hmm. and two touchdowns. Now, I'm not sure how many 100-yard games for him that is in a row, but this is the year of the running back, and when when we get down to the Highland finalists and they're in New York, it should be all running backs in there. Etikio Elliott, Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook. Uh, you got to throw Leonard Fournette in there. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just it, there's no quarterback that's deserving over these running backs this year. I'm with you. Now, with the next game coming up with Michigan State, what you think gonna happen? Like I said, I think that Ohio State is gonna lose a game. I don't know who they're gonna lose that game to, but Ohio State, they're gonna take an L somewhere. They have Michigan State followed by Michigan. Does Michigan and, have a chance? Oh, most definitely. Ohio State, they're not world beaters at all. Ohio State has a lot of talent. They have more talent than either one of those teams. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's clear this is not the same team as last year. Oh, yeah. You know, this is not the team that got hot and started running through teams on their way to winning a national championship. It's not the same team. Now, they do have a championship in the end, so somebody got to be representing one side, correct? Yep, they do have a championship game. Like I said, I think that they're going to lose one of those games against Michigan State or against Michigan. They're going to lose one of those games. And if they wear both of them, hey, I put my foot in my mouth. If they lose, who goes? <sighs> I do not know. But it looks like Iowa. Undefeated <laughs> Iowa may come out of the big Undefeated Iowa may come out of the Big Ten Ow. and go into the college football playoff. Iowa. Exactly. <laughs> they got football in Iowa. And Iowa, they haven't been playing games this year. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it was a close game they played against Minnesota, but Minnesota's a scrappy team. So you're not just going to blow out Minnesota. But Iowa comes out with the win, and Iowa, they're 10-0, and, and they're 6-0 in conference right now. Yeah, and they got Purdue and Nebraska left. You think any one of them going to get it? No, definitely not Purdue. That's, that's not even a question. Now, I know Nebraska may creep up on you because Nebraska, they played a couple teams tough. Tom, they had Tommy Armstrong out there, quarterback. But, nah. I think I was just going to be too much in the end. C.J. Bethard and uh, LaShawn Daniels, junior at running back. These guys are just a nice little duo. They're going to put up some yards on you. I think, I don't know how it's going to play out, but you know, we'll, we'll delve into it mm -hmm. after this quick commercial break.
You know how we do when we have funky music in our ear. We get to right to ain't no fighting, we just in there trying to win. Business. I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through. 